the telephone from Tehran in Saudi Arabia. Uh, sir, thank you very much for joining our broadcast. Now, I'd like to get your reaction to the fact that the Quran was burnt near ground zero on 9-11's anniversary. Some say it should be ignored as they are crazy people in every society and they shouldn't be given much importance. I'd like your thoughts on this from that context, if I may, please. Yeah, thank you for having me on the show. My thoughts are that anyone can take a match and burn paper. That's not anything difficult for any person to do. Even a child could do that. But the more challenging thing to be done is to read the Quran. And if you feel the Quran is such a terrible book, and it's a book that has the basis for terrorism, as you claim, why don't you read the Quran and show the world where the verses of the Quran endorses that? But this act of burning paper, to me, is meaningless. It's just something that shows ignorance of this person. And we've seen how the Nazis have burnt books, and we've also seen how the Israelis have burnt New Testaments. And as Christians, we are, Christians are taught that they should do unto others as they would like others to do unto them. And in fact, that's the same golden rule that Muslims have. Now, if Christians don't like to see their books burnt, why are they burning Qurans? And I think this action by this person just shows their um, small-mindedness and their ignorance in terms of how to really deal with something that they don't like. Right. Now, sir, some say that Islamophobia has been an inner reality within the U.S. that has recently reared its ugly head in public, especially because of the invasions of Muslim countries by the U.S. after 9-11, which the U.S. essentially blamed Wahhabis for. Now, do you agree, and how far do you see this sentiment of Islamophobia going? Well, when you ask the question if I agree, do I agree that it was Wahhabis that did 9-11, or I agree that Islamophobia has grown in the U.S.? I'm asking about Islamophobia being in a reality that has now reared its ugly head. Yes, I, I agree 100% because um, what we're experiencing today is what we saw right after 9-11. And it seems like when the U.S. is getting ready to attack a Muslim country, the first thing they do is demonize and destroy. They first start this wave of propaganda. And this wave of propaganda that we saw right after 9-11, which was demonizing Muslims, um, was done right before they attacked Afghanistan and Iraq. Now there's a lot of talk, and God forbid, I hope that, that this will never happen, but there's a lot of talk about attacking Iran, and I am looking at this demonization as a preparation in terms of building the propaganda in the hearts and minds of the people, in, to form a basis, I would say, in the hearts and minds of the people in the U.S. to justify an attack on Iran. And I pray to God that this never happens. So I would agree that there's a great um, increase. A lot of the things that many of us Muslims had to defend and to write um, explanations about during the early days of 9-11, I find myself doing those things now as we did before. And it's good for me because um, when we first had to address this, we had to, you know, come up with answers for it. But now that um, we have the experience of addressing it, it's easier for us to address. But at the same time, I am very concerned, very concerned about this growing Islamophobia, which is based on nothing but ignorance and lies about the religion of Islam. Right. Sir, I'd like to ask about um, uh, many religious leaders of other religious communities, for example, Jewish leaders and Christian leaders, have come out against the growing Islamophobia in the U.S. Can that be seen as the one positive thing coming out of the raising of this issue? Yes, I would, I would say I applaud that. I applaud the, the religious leaders, the Christians, the Jews, and, and others who have spoken out. And I agree, that's something that's very positive. And, uh, you know, going back to biblical saying, every knock is a boost. Um, and I even compare this to 9-11 when all the ugly things were being said about Islam and there was great Islamophobia then. But at the same time, we had the largest number of converts to Islam right after 9-11 than we had in any period of, of the history of the U.S. So in a way, with all this Islamophobia going on, it's causing people to become curious about Islam. And it's causing good-hearted people, people who have a stand for righteousness, whether they're Christian, Jews, or whatever religion they belong to, or 
ide- ideologies they belong to, um, they are seen through the facade. They are seen through how the media, which I believe is in bed with this Islamophobia, is really causing this. They are inflaming the situation, and even with this one person that has burnt the Quran um, at ground zero, and then before that we looked at what was happening with the big um, clash of um, those who were against the building of the mosque at ground zero, and then taking this pastor of a little church in Gainesville, um, Florida, and giving this person public attention, all of that tells me the media was fully in bed with this. And um, so it's, 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 to today, it's, it's heartening to see that good-hearted, right-minded people in the U.S. are all coming together, unifying themselves, to stand against this onslaught, against um, a religion, against Islam, and, and, it's, it, and I feel like that's a very good thing that's coming out of this. All right, that was Mr. Nasheed Abdul Khalik, writer and Islamic activist, joining us there on the line from Tehran in Saudi Arabia. Sir, thank you very much for your insights.